A growing list of Wall Street analysts are slashing their outlook for the global economy because supply chains are being absolutely hammered. Let's talk about it with Brian Alster, General Manager of Third Party Risk and Compliance Solutions at Dun & Bradstreet, and Binga Ajilore, Senior Economist at the Center for American Progress. Good to have you both here. Brian, I think the market rally yesterday, a lot of people uh, were focusing on maybe supply chains won't be hammered. What do you say? Well, I could tell you right now that Dun & Bradstreet's uh, data cloud of over 350 million businesses has shown that there's a significant um, growth in businesses, and those businesses are actually doing business globally. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a heightened level of interdependency across borders, and the coronavirus has shown a light specifically on China and the interdependency globally on businesses in China. Binga, the Federal Reserve Chairman uh, Jerome Powell described the U.S. economy's fundamentals Friday as strong, but he did say that the virus poses what he called evolving risks to the supply chain. If things were to move into perhaps the second quarter here, do you see a threat of recession for the U.S. economy? It is very possible that there's a threat of recession. While the economy has been pretty strong and the recovery has lasted for a long time, a lot of that's been propped up by consumers. And so if one of the problems with these viruses is that the outbreak might uh, affect uh, consumer demand. And so if that happens, that might lead us towards a recession. Manga, is this the type of situation where once and for all, companies like an Apple, these global multinationals that have relied on, on China for, for so long, say, you know what, let's bring some of this production back to the U.S.? It definitely could be. Uh, I think a lot of these firms were thinking about this during the tariff war because a lot of that was affecting their supply chains. And so they were thinking about moving towards out of China to other places. And so now this may uh, f force them to kind of think about moving back to the United States. Ryan, do you think that China's role as a, as a global outsourcer, I mean, this really highlights this virus, just how, what a role China plays. Has that role now been forever changed? I mean, how can companies go back to business as usual when this does indeed pass? Yeah, it's a great question. We're seeing over 50,000 companies being impacted by having tier one suppliers in the impacted region. And that grows to over 5 million companies impacted when you look at tier two suppliers or a supplier supplier. Mm -hmm. So we definitely see an impact. I I think the question really is, how long will it take for this virus to be contained globally? And then we can understand what the infinite impact will be or the long-term impact will be on supply chains. I can tell you right now that here in the United States specifically, we're seeing limited impact so far. Um, and I think that from a impact on GDP, we don't expect to have a significant impact on GDP here in the US unless the containment extends beyond 2020 then we need to reconsider what that impact will be. A lot of CEOs and executives, Brian, are telling me that production for them in China has started to pick back up. Is that believable? Um, we are starting to hear, both firsthand and secondhand, that there are, is starting to be movement in factories. What we haven't been able to see is that that output has started to translate to shipments moving Like, do they have enough workers there? Uh, we don't know. Yeah. I think that that's still an unknown that we need to get into, but I will tell you that the data hasn't changed yet. So there is a little bit of a lag in understanding that, but there is data out there saying that February was the largest impact to uh, supplies coming out of and shipments coming out of China. So we do know that the impact was real. Mm -hmm. We just haven't know, we don't know yet when it'll start to come back. Yeah. But aren't there roadblocks to getting those products to where they need to go? I mean, we're seeing that uh, shipments at ports are down about 20% in the California area. So, so there are two hurdles here, right? It's get the people back to work in China, get those factories up to speed, but then actually the logistics of getting those products to us here in the U.S. It is. There is a real impact there, and it's multiple steps along the supply chain, not just the port and the, um, the factory and where it's being shipped. So there's multiple points of, of uh, consideration that we need to see open up. I think right now the key concern here is what are companies doing and how are they going to react to these changes? We've seen uh, press about companies that are impacted and it's in the normal areas where we've started to see, Dun & Bradstreet has started to see impacts um, it's been in services, specifically tourism. We've seen wholesale trade, both durable goods and non-durable goods, specifically in elect led by electronics. Mm -hmm. We've seen retail, and we've seen manufacturing. So these things are all vital, critical components to the economy. And the sooner we see containment, the sooner we'll start to see a return to normalcy. Uh, Binga, frame this for us. Over the next couple of weeks, how bad uh, could the global macro data look like? I think a lot of investors, at least from the prism of the, little, the slight rally on Friday, the big time rally on Monday, think maybe data in March may not be that bad. 
The biggest thing we have to worry about is uncertainty, and markets always react poorly to uncertainty. So yesterday we saw a big rise in the stock market because the announcement of the impending G7 uh, working together. But as we heard just early this morning, that it wasn't good enough. So we're going to probably see a lot of fluctuations today. So a lot of it is that as long as there's certainty, then once we have certainty, that'll have not as much of an impact. But if there's a lot of uncertainty, then there's a lot we have to worry about. And, and lastly, uh, if the Fed were to do a, consort, a concerted effort with, with central banks around the world and cut interest rates, while that would not cure the virus, would it at least, do you think, put a floor on, on the stock market for now and sort of help to restore confidence? I mean, does it, does it play a role, cutting rates at this point? It does very much play a role, and cutting the rates would actually help us calm the markets because a lot of it is there's an expectation of a rate cut. And so when there's not a rate cut, then the markets act uh, adversely. So markets are expecting a rate cut, and so if we have one, that's going to put a, kind of make it more uh, calmly. All right, Brian Alster, Binga Aji Lowry, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.